all right everybody what is up it's the art programmer here and today we are going to discuss about the mvvm architecture using android jetpack components so before we get to the main topic here we are going to discuss about the basic idea behind mvvm so first of all mvvm stands for model view view model now according to mvvm standards the business logic or backend logic should be separated from the view or user interface so in terms of android it means that our activities and fragment should not contain any logic to fetch data or any other kind of data handling this will be done by the view model now view model acts as a mediator between the data source and the view it contains all the logic for data presentation as you can see in the picture here that activity and fragment depends upon view model to get data while the view model itself depends upon different data sources to fetch data this kind of architecture provides a fine layer of abstraction between different components of our application. Activities don't have to worry about how to fetch data anymore. They will simply depend upon view model for that purpose. To apply MVVM architecture on Android, Google has provided us some libraries in Android Jetpack's architecture components. And in this series of videos, we will learn how to apply those libraries. So in this tutorial series, we will make a restaurant simulator application. So here's a quick look at what we will be building. As we launch our application, it shows a screen with a button to create an order. And when we do that, a new activity opens up to take our order. Let's say we want to order a pizza with pineapple on it. And when we save it, there you go. A newly added order is showing here. We didn't even have to refresh it. So enough with the theory now, let's practice the MVVM architecture. Now first of all clone this repository here to set up your project. Link will be given in description. Now don't worry if you are not familiar with git, you can just head over to repository and download it in zip file. Then you can extract it. After that import it into Android studio. I am sure you know how to do that. And after import completes you will get something like this. Layouts and activities are already set up, so you don't have to do that. And all the dependencies related to architecture components are already added. Now be sure to apply these plugins here, Kotlin extension for Android and Kotlin's annotation processor plugin. So let's get started now. The first thing to do is to add room components, which will be responsible for creating our SQLite database and provide us with a way to access the data stored. Room libraries provides an abstract way of doing SQL transactions without worrying about errors, um, which might be induced because of queries. Even if something's wrong, it will throw an exception at compile time. So right click here and create a package. Let's name it data. Again right click on data and create a Kotlin file and name it repository as I have done here. For now leave this file as it is, we will come back to this later. Again right click under data and create a new package and name it room as I have done here. This package or directory will contain all of our room related components. After that right click under room directory and create a new Kotlin file and name it order. This will be our entity class which is required to build the schema of the table. Actually entity class is just a data class with the add entity annotation as you can see here. We have also defined the table name property of the entity annotation as you can see here. It is used to define the name of the table explicitly otherwise it takes the class name as table name. We have id field with at primary key annotation which will act as the primary key for our table. We also have auto generate properties set to true for our primary key. Next we have item field and amount field which will be used for item name and its amount while creating order and at last we have extra instructions field which has add column info annotation with some properties defined. First one is name property which can be used to define a column's name explicitly otherwise it takes the field name as a column name. Second is default value property which will be used in case null is entered. So that's it for our entity class. You can pause and write the code now. I already have it written here. For more information regarding entity classes, visit developer.android.com. So that now we have defined our table schema. The next step is to create a class to perform CRUD operations. 
in room we call this a data access object or DAO. DAOs are interfaces or abstract classes which contains method for accessing our table. So right click and create a new Kotlin file and name it order DAO as I've already done here. Now as you can see here DAO interface is annotated with at DAO DAO. Further there are some methods which will help perform the query. Out of which first one is get all orders with at query annotation which will be used to query all rows from the table. It has return type of list of order but wrapped around live data. Don't worry if you don't know what live data is. We will get to that later on this tutorial. The main focus here is the annotation. As you can see this method is annotated with at query annotation which allows us to write a query which will be called on the database whenever this method is called. These queries are checked at compile time which means if there is any error in the query, compiler will tell us right away. There, Android Studio is showing it now as an error. We have three predefined query annotations, insert, update and delete. Insert annotated method will take an order object as input and will insert that object in our table. We don't really have to write the query for insertion. Room will take care of that. Insert annotation takes some property like on conflict, which is a conflict resolution mechanism. But we don't really need that here as we have our primary key generated automatically. Update annotations work the same way, except we don't really need that here because the application won't have any update mechanism. Last one is delete. Methods annotated with add delete will take in the entity object as input parameter and will delete the respective row from the table. Also delete has a return type of integer and returns the number of rows successfully deleted. But as you can see here we are not using the delete annotation except we have a custom query for that purpose. Because as mentioned delete annotated method will take an object or a list of objects and delete those particular rows but we don't want that. We want to delete all the rows at once so we are using a custom query. So that's it for our DAO class. Next, we will create a room database class which will act as our main access point for all the SQLite based operations. So go on right click and create a new file and name it as order room database as I already have here. Next declare this class as abstract and make it extend room database class. Also put add database annotation over the class declaration. Add database annotation takes some properties. First one is entities property which takes in an array of entities we have declared. Entity means table. We only have one entity here and that is order. So we have it within square brackets. It's just a Kotlin way of defining array with constants. Second is version property which takes in an integer value. Here you should set it to 1 as I have done and remember to update it by 1 whenever there is any change in entity or schema. Otherwise while compiling it will throw an exception. One more thing if you had done some mistakes in the entity class and compiled the app and now you figure out that mistake and rectified it. But room database won't let you compile the app without updating the version number. But on the other hand you don't want to increment the version number. So in that case just head over to build menu and clean project. So when you compile the project next time it won't throw that exception. Anyway there are three mandatory things associated with the database class. First is that it should be declared abstract. Second is that the entities property here should contain all the entities classes we are using in our database. In our case it's only one. Third is that our database class should have abstract functions for every DAO or DAOs which doesn't take any parameters and should have return type as DAO classes respectively. Now to get an instance of this database class we have a static function here which will return our database object. We will use database builder function of room class to build the instance. In our implementation we are checking if the instance is null or not. If it is not null then we return that instance otherwise we create new and then return it. Database builder function takes three parameters. First is context. We are using application context as this database is our singular database for whole app. So this makes sense. Second parameter is for a database annotated class. We pass our abstract database class here. In our case it will be order room database. 
Third, we pass our database file name as string. This whole creation block is inside this synchronized inline function, which makes it so that no other thread can access or do any modification to our database instance while we are creating it. One more thing you might have noticed here is this at volatile annotation. This makes this field immediately available to other threads whenever it changes. In our case, it will be available as soon as it is created. So that's it for our database class. Next, we will set up our repository class that we created earlier. This repository will act as an additional abstraction layer above the underlying data fetching mechanism. Whether we are getting data from local or from network, also it is a good practice to have a repository system to manage and access data. So I did this repository class to have a static method which will return instance of this repository. You will see the same kind of mechanism here as the room database class. First we are checking for an instance and if it is null then we are creating a new one via a private constructor and it is taking a room database as a parameter and is setting it to a private field. Next we have some public functions which provides a way to perform operations on the database. All orders function is returning a live data of list of orders. Insert is taking an order object and insert it into our table. Same for delete order. One thing to note here is the suspend keyword here. This is part of Kotlin's coroutine. The suspend keyword flags this function to be pausable. It means that these functions can be paused and resumed later. To execute a long running operation, these functions are helpful. Suspend functions can be called only from another suspend functions or from other coroutines. So that makes it easy to perform tasks asynchronously. Anyway, it is more of a topic itself and we will cover that in another video. So that's our repository class. One more thing worth mentioning is the live data. Live data is an observable data holder. It is a life cycle aware meaning that it only updates those app components which are in active state like an activity in on started or on resume state or a fragment. It follows a subscription based mechanics. Activity subscribes to the live data and whenever the underlying data changes, live data will immediately pass those changes to its active subscriber. Using live data has many advantages. You can head over to the developer website to learn more about it. So that's it for this video. You can go on and compile the app and you will not notice any differences yet because we didn't really have connected the database with other components of our application. This will be done by the view model class. If anything goes wrong or if you want to take reference, just head over to restaurant simulators github repository. Link is given in description and change the branch to room and then you can clone it or download it to get on the same page till this part of the tutorial. Ok people, we will now see how vModel works and how to use it in the next video of this series. Link will be given in the description and good luck. Now don't forget to like, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. This is the Art Programmer signing out.